uh, a beautiful day, 11 o'clock Central, 12 Eastern, and Matt Nagy apparently has been told he's going to be fired on Thanksgiving, which this report, again, is just completely bizarre. Hey, Matt, you're going to coach on Thanksgiving against the Lions, and then you're going to get fired. That is so back-ass words, but just vintage Chicago Bears. Like Part of what I'm hearing from different people is that this is something the Bears would do, and, cl- and apparently they're well, doing it. It's amazing. I wonder if you know, Jordan Schultz, who does a nice job, followed Jordan, know each other on Twitter for a little bit. Um, he tweeted out yesterday a report that he said that a lot of the players are to the point they want him fired. Um, now, I'm sure it's been the case for a while, but maybe just kind of getting to light. I wonder if that's a situation where – the Bears brass was like, all right, we, we're done with this. Like, we we have to just – I don't want to say get out in front of it because I feel like they're not out in front of it at all. But we kind of have to do something. And it's it's the only thing we have le- left to do. Uh, this has been – you and I have talked about this for years, Carl. I mean, th- this has been just a, a train wreck for a couple of years now. Uh I get he hasn't had a great quarterback. I understand that. But he, he they don't do anything well. Like they really don't. They're so mismanaged. They're, 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 the way they play is, is is so bungled all the time. I think uh, I think it's the right decision, but it's a very weird way to come to the decision. Right. Well, look, let, let's let's give a full scale view here. They first of all, they don't do this. This is not what the Bears do. They didn't do it with John Fox. They didn't do it with Mark Tresman. They've never done it. They, they they don't do it. I mean, I, I'm just outlining the last two who very well could have been fired in the middle of the season, and it would have made a whole lot of sense. Uh, particularly in, in Fox's last year, he shouldn't have been there because you had Mitchell Trubisky as a rookie quarterback. You weren't setting him up uh, for success. Right. It was, it, uh, there's just a million things the Bears do wrong. but So they don't do this. And then the other side of it is uh, Ryan Pace has been here seven years. Seven. <laughs> All right, they they are going to finish under 500 again, which will be six of his seven years that the Bears were not above 500. Right. So never won a playoff game. Never won a playoff game. Been in one playoff game. Double Two. doink. Cody Parkey against uh, you know whatever the the Eagles had a great run that team, but they the Bears that was at home. All of it. Th- th- this is. Um, This needs to be the start of a full-scale house cleaning. And you have the same bumbling individuals who will be making the hires, who hired a first-time GM in Ryan Pace, who hired a first-time head coach in Matt Nagy in his second swing after Fox. Um, It's it's, it's not like this is a a lock that – or even close to a lock, or even likely, as how I should put it, that the Bears are going to get this right going forward. No. Oh, God, no. It's definitely not a lock. But – if they don't fire Pace and they let him pick another head coach, everyone involved should be ashamed. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I know, look, it's, it's an open secret in the NFL. Carmen, you've talked about it. Like, the McCaskies love Pace. And that's all fine and well. Like, I did last week I was on a podcast with Kevin Powell over at WGN. And we were talking. And I and I don't think he'd mind me saying this. I essentially said to him, like, they, they've, they've got to fire them. Like they just have to fight him. This was after we did the pod. And, you know, he just kind of reiterated what we've always talked about, which is like, yeah, but, like, you never know with them. Like, you just never know what they're going to do. And I – look, I am not a Bears fan. I am not emotionally invested in this. But I, if they don't fire the two of them, I mean, the Bears fans should, should revolt. I don't know how you could possibly look at this and say, yeah, Pace, another chance. I mean, I just, I still understand. I, there's no rationale for it at all. Yeah, uh, and as far as Bears fans revolting, uh, the fire Nagy chants at Soldier Field were loud and clear yeah. on Sunday. They broke out at the Bulls game last night. The Bulls getting smoked by the Pacers by 30 plus, and, and fire Nagy happens in the fourth quarter, um, and then his son is playing in a playoff game for Lake Forest High School, which is where the Bears uh, have practice. Hallis Hall and where they practice. And they play in Cary Grove, and it's the fourth quarter, and there's fire naggy chants going on there. The, 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 the school principal of Cary Grove is apologizing and says it's been addressed. Um, 
you know, this this is this dude's dad. Um, you know, I, I assume he cares about his father. It, it's just it be that's just, it. I appreciate the passion of fans that you care so much. Do something better. Don't taunt a kid uh, and his dad getting fired. That's just pathetic. But uh, at least the high school, I guess, stepped in. I, the, the, the whole fans, I paid for my ticket, yada, yada. It, it gets exhausting to me. Like, he, you, it, booing does nothing. Nothing. If you, if, you want to, if you want to go at a guy who's not giving effort, I get it. Um, and firing Nagy Chant is not really directed. At, it's, 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 hey, it's not at you, Matt, so much as it, it's at Virginia and the Bears management and Ryan Pace and everything. And I, I, I get it. And, and at an NFL game, it's totally fine. But at a high school game, come on, man. That, that, that ain't right. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think you do that. But I, I just think it speaks to the larger issue here, which is just they, they just have the – they have the appearance of an organization that doesn't really give a shit. Like, they have the appearance of an organization that's just like, yeah, look at that. He's terrible again. I don't know. I mean, I sat there. And I watched that Ravens Bears game. And I got to tell you, that game was the height of incompetence. I mean, just the height of it. You're playing a Ravens team that, quite honestly, isn't even that good with Lamar Jackson on it. He's not playing. They're playing a guy in Tyler Huntley who cannot play. Cannot play at. I mean, just is is at best a, a bad backup quarterback. You somehow get a gift of all gifts. They, they, they blitz you cover zero like imbeciles on a fourth and 11 that Dalton throws up and they get a touchdown on. And you can't win that game? Like, oh. like the, the Ravens won't move down the field like they were the 99 Rams. You're like, how is, how is it even possible? Blown coverage, pass interference. I, you know, like, this is just a horrible coach. Team. And then I tweeted through this whole thing, but they had a sequence in the earlier portion of the fourth quarter. Where it's like second and one. Or no, excuse me, third and one. Third and one, they run a go ball that has no chance of being completed. Now it's fourth and one at midfield. They run the punting unit on. Nope, timeout. We're not sure about that anymore. Then they show the sideline, and Nagy's like screaming at some guy who's running like communications because his headset doesn't work. So then they call the timeout. They come out. They decide, nope, we're going for it. We're going to run a play. The Ravens put like 10 guys at the line of scrimmage. And the Bears are just like, we're running Wildcat and lose a yard. And that, it's just like. Don't forget about the holding penalty. Even if it worked, they weren't, weren't going to get it. Uh, that, yeah, that was. Right. Oh, my God. You're like, how? Like, four years into being the head coach, that's it? Like, that's what you've got. It was just. It was one of the worst coach sequences I've ever seen. They came out to start the second half and had an illegal motion penalty to start the second half. I mean, look, he, he's he he has uh, he's been out over his skis and and honestly, like for me doing doing Bears post game shows and and hearing uh, Dan Hampton and O'Brien scream about John Fox for for three years, and then they hire Nagy, who and you tell me, Verderam. You, the, the the Chiefs had the Titans down twenty one to three. He's the off the OC. They lose twenty two twenty one, and immediately it was like you're hiring this guy. You can't close out a twenty one to three lead at halftime in a playoff game. I mean, how much how much was that a, a rightful red flag at the time that he does not know how to coach offense? I, I, look, I don't even know that any of it matters anymore at this point. Like they just have to fire him. <laughs> and I, I mean, really, like, and I, actually, I was on the Arrowhead Attic podcast right before this. And I said this about two minutes before the news broke. If they lose to Detroit, they should just leave him on the tarmac. They, they just, <laughs> I, I'm serious. But you know what? Walk your ass home. I don't care. We're done with this. Here's a leg of turkey. Walk. I mean, I, because I got to tell you, I don't think they're going to lose to Detroit because I don't think anyone could lose to Tim Boyle. But if there is a team. They could manage to lose that game. It's a hundred percent the Chicago Bears. Like the, 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 the Lions have had a bunch of near wins. They've got a tie. They nearly beat yeah, the Bears. Yeah, no, it's Oh, they actually did have a near win against Cleveland. I guess they, they, Cleveland they were, they were barely, through the season. They they very well could lose Thanksgiving, but that'd be an amazing thing. Like let, let's just say, for instance, 
And, and Chris Tabor, who's the Bears special teams coach, was yeah. up is up first at Hallis Hall today. Um, and and he's he's he has to address the media. This is how back ass words the Bears are. Coach Nagy is our head how? coach. Like, I want to work for doing? this guy now. Love him to death. Um, said Nagy will lead the Bears to a win in Detroit. I believe that in my heart. And then and then quote, I don't know anything about that report. I mean, it's just like you you put the special teams coordinator in this position. I mean, I, I, you 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 really have to you gotta work to be this bad. I gotta tell you, even even from a reporter PR standpoint, the Bears are interesting. If they do things, you're like, what? Okay. Like we we went and covered them the year they went to the playoffs. So I, I was at the Bears Rams Sunday night game. And I was at the double doink game. I was up in the box. The next year, they're like, yeah, listen, we're closing rank. And they shut out like 60 outlets they had previously. And I'm, I'm ballpark with it, not a number, but it was it was a sizable amount. Like, we're closing rank because, at least according to them, like there were some outlets that felt like they couldn't get enough proper coverage because they were competing with other outlets. It was like, you're the Bears. You need all the good publicity you can get. Right, like all of it, and yet they like cut off their nose to spite their face because I, I guess you know at least according to them, like a handful of the outlets were upset about the fact that there were too many people in the locker room. They were trying to get access or whatever. And you're like, hey guys, you have Mitchell Trubisky. Like things are not going particularly well. Maybe if you give people access, they'll be a little bit. Not- nope, nope. Just cut off a whole bunch of people. Which listen, I mean, I'm not losing any sleep over not going to Soldier Field, but it just it is. It's been, like I've never dealt with a franchise. It's just been more like hostile about it. Like it's just it's very strange, very strange. I, I, for an example, to show how different the, the sport can be, and there are certainly teams like the Bears that are very closed off. Like I remember, one, I wanted to do an interview with Brandon Bean. I wanted to talk to him one on one, the Bills general match. So I called up the PR guy over in Buffalo, who's one of the best, Derek Boyko. I said, hey, Derek, can, you know, can we make it happen? I think it was later that day I got a phone call from Buffalo, and it was just Brandon being like, "Hey, what's going on?" <laughs> it was just, it was immediately shut up, like no problem, no issue at all. Like with the Bears, you're like, "Hey, listen, can we cover a regular season game?" No, we're letting six outlets in. You're like, okay, guys, that's great. Like that's that's great. You have a press box that spans eighty yards, but no, 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 it's not a front. Yeah, I, I, I have. That's amazing, the Buffalo story, because I have never found NFL uh, media to be overly friendly. The Chiefs. Some of them are like that. The Minnesota's like that, too. That's interesting. Okay. Minnesota's really good. The, the Niners are really good. I mean, I could go on. There are some really, really helpful teams. But there are some teams. It, it's just, they treat it like it's it's like federal security. Yeah, right. Like, what are, you're, not a, you're a football team. What do you well, think is going to happen? Well, well, that's also one of Nagy's weaknesses. Like he, his press conferences, he's so, I don't know if it comes from the organization and it very well might, but he's so unsure of himself of what he can say around injuries and literally anything else. They're just, very close off. It, it's, he just gets himself in these circular talking nonsense babbles yeah. that are painful. And I'm like, is this how you communicate to your players? Cause the They're reports uh, and, and I don't, I have a hard time believing that the whole locker room is 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 anti Nagy now, or most of the locker room, or half the locker room, whatever whatever it is, uh, because he's 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 a player's guy. They, they but at the end of the day, maybe they just don't think he's good at his job, which of course would be a very fair take. And uh, good luck to Matt in whatever his next in, endeavors will be.